I've had to open up to telesales. I still prefer Zoom, but every once in a while, because I'm in Florida, it's a retirement state, and um, they sometimes they just don't know how to work it. So I have to I have to schedule a telesale, and and it's worked out. I just found found a way to duplicate essentially that process by sending the information via text message, just like I would show it if I was doing a Zoom sale, just like I would show it if I was sitting across the table from somebody. Thank you for joining us on our Family First Life Tri-State Serve the People podcast. We appreciate you tuning in, spending your time to develop and grow with us. Follow us, please, on all our social media platforms at Family First Life Tri-State or FFL Tri-State. We love you. Keep listening. And I hope this information is serving you across the country. All right, everybody, thank you for jumping on with me for our training day podcast. I got my man, Wayne Carr, the big dog of FFL Hidden Gems, now Hall of Fame producer in a year and Hall of Fame manager in a year of 2022. So my man has donned the red jacket before, but never donned it twice. And now he's able to do that. Agency doubled in 2022 off to a terrific start in 2023. Wayne, how you doing, my brother? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me. How are I'd you? I'd be doing well, too, if I were you. With a diamond on my head, you know, and uh, all those accolades, dude. I mean, it, it does it does, it does, does get awesome that it pays off, right? Like, you know, you've been at this thing for a while. You know, 2015 you started. And for you yeah. to... You know, continue, and I, I mean, every single year you've grown. You've grown in what you've done, personal personal production or agency, and then what you've grown intellectually and capacity. So talk to us a little bit about the evolution that you've seen in your business doubling in 2022 and what that, what, what, were, the, what were the keys to success that you saw with that type of growth? Um, the key to this is that I think, I think the best, and I was talking about this the other day, I think the, the thing that I can most closely attribute that to is, is really just staying plugged in and being aware of, of what's going on. I'm a, I'm an avid learner, understood, uh, not, not right off the bat, but pretty early on that this is a copycat system. And the only way to know what you should should or shouldn't copy is by staying staying close to the fire. And um, in 2021, going into 2022, we saw the industry change dramatically for us anyway, in regards to the transition to telesales and, and virtual sales, whereas historically we were kneecapped and kneecapped. And I think aligning myself with, with people that were championing that process and, and really just learning how to adjust and and guiding the people on the team and following honestly some of the people on the team through that process and just allowing it to to kind of manifest allowed us to to continue that growth trajectory that we saw um, throughout the year and and double again um, in 2022. It's huge, bro. Huge. You know. Now you decided to continue to lead from the front. You know. Again, I say decided because we both know there's a lot of people that get to 300 families a month, 500 families a month, and decide not to lead from the front. So you decided to lead from the front. Why did you decide? To, why, why was that your decision? Well, I think um, because I've been here since 2015, that's, that's essentially how, how the company was built, and that was really the only way that I knew how to, to spur that growth or to continue to have people plugged in and, and follow as we transition from, not from one platform to another, but as, as things kind of started to, to round themselves out from a, a hybrid perspective and a telesales, virtual sales perspective, I couldn't effectively support people through that if I wasn't in my mind anyway, if I wasn't going through it with them. So that meant that I had to learn, I I'd still learning telesales, I had to learn virtual sales um, so that as I, I could kind of guide somebody through 
that may fear giving up to going face to face and the control that they have and the comfort that they have doing that, um, making that transition to virtual sales and putting them at ease that it's going to be okay. And I think in 2022, I was I ran a hybrid schedule for the most part, probably 80-20. Mm. So being able to to do that and and hit Hall of Fame and still have the annuity uh, and and just overall advanced markets, quote unquote, production that I had says says a lot about the capabilities and the lack of lack of anxiety that somebody should feel when they're looking at mm. at transitioning or just changing their business overall. That's strong, as we know. That that's strong because we know that the business morphs a bit, right? Like it's morphed quite a Man. bit in the last two three years. Um, from, you know, when's the last time you called in an optical? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you right. got everything's right. an e-app, everything's an instant decision, everything is electronic now. Signatures are all electronic, you know. It just changes the way business gets done, and then it changes the way we think about the business. You know, one of the, the stark changes that I've seen that I didn't notice at first was what the lead vendors have done. Do you remember mm -hmm. trying to get leads and then they would, like, internet leads, and they would say, well, we could do it if you'll take the whole state. And you'd be like, right. no. No, I don't want any part of the whole they state. They were nervous too. Yeah. I don't want any part of the whole state because what if I get a lead down in the, the depths of this state that no one will drive to where we're just going to, I'm going to lose money. I'm going to lose my shirt taking the whole state. Now, yeah. the idea of taking the whole state is it opens up. The conversations open up with what state would you. That, that's a huge change, Wayne, from zip code to county counties to now the state and i noticed that the lead vendors are yeah. relishing quite a bit on being, people being able to take states because so much of the business now is virtual so what has that done for yeah. your business and what have you seen in that in that in what i'm talking about uh it's 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 given people the ultimate flexibility i i remember being nervous about that too. It's like, mm -hmm. hey man, can we get a couple people to come in with me yeah, on this? Correct, correct, I got correct. To leave I need a couple. I need some people. I don't who really want to yes. do that myself. Need the buying, yes. Um, but now, not only that, like people are eager to take the whole state because it gives them the lead flow they need to be active. Because as you know, um, when you're doing telesales or virtual sales, the amount of leads that you need to have. And the way that you book your appointments, if you are booking appointments, needs to be increased and the, the appointment windows need to be condensed just in case. So it gives you the, the, the volume to do that. The other thing that it's done that I think a lot of people overlook is, is from a, a leadership perspective, it gives you the ability to shape a schedule and map out a path for anybody, regardless of where they are regardless of what they're trying to transition from because of the ability to buy leads in the different time zones up to a six hour variance. So you can't tell me anymore that you want this and, <laughs> and I not be able to put a plan in front of you for you to come get it. And so it really becomes up to you. And it, it just, it just opens yeah. up a lot of doors across the board. Yeah. I like that. You know, the fact that, Hey, we have, we're not going to play this game of, you know, you want to be successful. There's, there's the barriers have, have really been let down. <laughs> Gloves are off. You know what I'm saying? For you to, to take advantage of this opportunity and be successful, though that, that has been dropped quite a bit, um, which is amazing, you know? Um, now, when you say 80 20, was that eight? Which, what, what was the 80? Was it, was that, what was I'm it? 80 virtual 80 virtual got it yeah very rarely do i do i leave from the front of these devices <laughs> leave from the front of these devices now you started off with zoom sales zoom your mm -hmm. your, your your method to go to market was zoom 
or virtual, correct? Mm-hmm. Have you morphed into tele? Are you are you have you moved some of that into tele? Are you still doing a lot of Zoom? How's it, how, what's your ratio? I, I still do a lot of Zoom. Uh, I'm more open to telesales. I mean, I work with the 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 proclaimed and, and well decorated queen of telesales, uh, and we use that as a means to to get agents acclimated to telesales through through that platform that's offered there. So I've had to I've had to open up to telesales. I still prefer Zoom, but every once in a while, because I'm in Florida, it's a retirement state, and um they sometimes they just don't know how to work it so i have to i have to schedule a telesale and and it's worked out i just found found a way to duplicate essentially that process by sending the information via text message just like i would show it if i was doing a zoom sale just like i would show it if i was sitting across the table from somebody Hmm. meaning the numbers or the presentation the numbers the, the collateral sheet my license Like if I'm texting, my intro is the same whether I'm sitting across the table, virtual or telesales. But the only difference is if I'm sitting across the table, I have my license. I'm showing you my license. You can see my face and I can show you the collateral sheet. On Zoom, I can screen share and show it to you. If I'm on a telesale, while I'm telling you about it, I'm texting it to you. Got it. So it's just a way for me to, to kind of put them at ease and to edify edify myself as the expert and to to kind of give them a visual of what I'm walking them through because most people are visual are just visual human beings visual learners so to speak makes a lot of sense and that's been working now obviously you know with a double with a with a true double from 2021 to 2022 volume wise and the amount of families hidden gems was able to protect you know if Telesales was a huge portion of that, you know, what what are some things you're doing to onboard and introduce the sales process to people? What are you introducing the sales process as? Field, Zoom, Tele, and what are the word tracks and some of the bullet points that you're using to get people moving? I'm honestly, um, I'm, I'm for the most part leaving it up to them. Uh, and, it, and it depends on on their situation. If they're part time, um, trying to do this part time to get away from it, I'm presenting it as the the ultimate command of time. It's like, great, we're gonna we're gonna have you maximize your time. I'm able to maximize their time before and after work, and the times that they have off and truncate it. Whereas before, I would need a if they work full time Monday through Friday. I would need them to start dialing in the evening on Thursday, Friday for the weekends. Now I can legit have them dial two days during the week doing telesales and then have them not tie up their entire weekend to make that transition, but give me uh, a half day Saturday um, on the phones hard and then have them still keep Sunday for their family day so that that they don't get burnt out and they still shorten the learning curve in regards to making that transition. One of the other things that I'm talking to them about is still the consistency that's necessary. Right. Excuse me. So that we don't turn it into just a weekend run so that they understand the importance of, of grabbing some nuggets on a Tuesday, grabbing some more nuggets on a Thursday to carry themselves into the weekend instead of it just being a Saturday thing and not touching it again until next Saturday. Uh, so we're having conversations about that too. So it, it, it really just comes down to, first of all, asking them what kind of time they can to dedicate this to make their transition to this that much more efficient. And then still a very similar conversation. Uh, what, what won't you do to, to make this transition happen? And then from there, uh, mapping it out for them so that, so that they can see it be it telephone, telephone, hybrid on the weekend, or just telephone throughout the entire week. Um, it's really, I, I don't want to say it's a, it's an easy sale, um, but going back to what we talked about before with taking the entire state and the time zones, it makes it easy to to put together a plan and map out a schedule that that makes sense for anybody that's considering this opportunity. 
it is really unbelievable where the business has gone <laughs> and just the fact that the way we can tailor make now, you know, the way we can set people up to win. I'm hearing your word tracks and what you're saying and how much you're leveraging, how much the business has changed to, to get people going. You know, um, when you think about now agency development and then leadership development inside that, because obviously you, it, you didn't get, you didn't double by yourself, you know, you no. with the help of people and then the help of people. So, you know, what does that look like when you're leading, you know, growing leaders? What are some things you're doing to try to help shine a light on the path towards the goal? Um, for me, it, it goes back to, uh, to leading from the front and, and understanding who those people are and what they want to accomplish. And, and honestly, just humbling myself uh, especially early on, just humbling myself enough to to understand that I didn't know how to do this. And some people did beat me to the party and I needed to to kind of pull up a chair and watch, listen, and learn. And then utilizing their their skill sets that that they developed and platforms that they developed to to complement what I was providing for the agents that I brought on and, and just allow them to plug into to those live dials and hear, hear, hear um, that team dial, hear her dial, uh, plug into to that training, and then just just act as a essentially as a complement to that. And uh, that agency is is one of the fastest growing agencies within my agency. Also understand that that it's time for me to be hands off and go find somebody else to work with. Go find another another agency to help because this is, this one's good and just answer the phone when, when that one calls mm -hmm. and keep it moving yeah. and stay out of the way. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Um, annual convention right around the corner here when you've oh, been man. to many of them, you, all of them and understand the power. Talk to me a little bit about, talk to our audience about why annual convention, why, why, it, why, it, why you shouldn't miss or why you can't miss. Yeah, I mean, annual convention for me has always been an opportunity to, to build relationships. I think this is a relationship business, regardless of how you look at it, internally and externally, uh, when it comes to the clients. We're helping people. We're serving people. And without convention, you don't build those relationships and able to pull on the expertise of yourself, um, the the Ninas, the Haydens, the the Matt Smith still, the people that, that I look to. Um, when when I was coming up, that I I relished in the opportunity to to not only rub rub shoulders with that convention, but the things that happened um, after convention was over, and the conversations that are available to you, and the things that you can can kind of gleam and pull from it and, and apply to your business because they're they're available. They don't have anywhere to go. They're not they're not running a, a schedule trying to get to the next podcast, the next meeting. Their agents aren't calling them because they're in a home, it's really <laughs> uninterrupted growth if you want it to be. Right. Um, because they don't have anywhere else to go. So you establish those relationships and those relationships really carry you throughout the year because those become people that you can lean on and pull from, not just people that you see on on podcasts and on trainings anymore. And that's powerful. <laughs> that's really good. That's so vivid. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, dude. It's going to be a fantastic convention. Um, Hidden Gems goals for 2023. What do you got, brother? Man, we're trying to triple. Dublin is Dublin is just is what we've done for the past five, six years. I have an agency that, that also committed to tripling uh, within my agency. So if, if they triple and I just let them do what they do and, and – find some other people to develop and grow, then there's no reason why Hidden Gems can't triple, too. How many families protected? 45,000 <laughs> families protected. I didn't carry the one. I moved the decimal. Like I said, sometimes you just got to get out of the way. And yourself and let people do it. <laughs> I love it, dude. <laughs> That's huge goals, man. I love it. Um, you guys are more than capable. 
you got to get as many people down to Miami as possible to, to, to get that momentum rolling out of there. But I appreciate you taking time out of your day to get on with me and share with our audience. You got a lot to offer, and it's, it's high time for people to start understanding the word tracks that you're putting down, man, because it's going to help a lot of people grow. I appreciate you, buddy. Man, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. Thank you, Wayne Carr. Keep listening. Keep paying attention. We love you, man. God bless.